What's happening, family? It's time to pray. And I want to offer you a challenge on today as we uh, go to God in prayer. And that challenge is that God wants us to grow. Grow and become all of who God would have you to be. Have you ever said to yourself, I'm going to lose some weight? I know many of us have. Have you ever said, I'm going to save some money? Or I'm going to get out of credit card debt? Or I'm going to buy a house? Or I want, a, I want a better job? Or better yet, I want to start my own business. I want to do this or I want to do that. Those are areas that we could consider as growth, areas where you and I can become more of where we are. Maybe you want to adjust how you see yourself. Maybe you want to adjust the actual revenue you have. Maybe you want to just be a better individual in whatever capacity. Maybe you want to be a part of a revolution. You want to start some things that are phenomenal in your community, in your church, whatever. All of it is a part of growth. It's a becoming thing. And God wants us to do that. We're made in the image of God. We're made to become. We're made to be greater. We're made to have whatever it is that's within our giftedness and our destiny to seize it and become all of who God would have us to be. But here's the thing. It doesn't just happen because you think it or it doesn't just happen because you want it or desire it. There are some components that come uh, the, the makeup becoming who God would have you to be. And the Bible is filled with those principles that teach us that. I want to share one of them on today. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. Go to the ant, O sluggard, observe her ways and be wise, which having no chief officer or ruler prepares her food in the summer, gathers her provisions in harvest. How long will you lie down, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Your poverty will come in you, come in your like a vagabond, and you will your your need like an armed man. That text is reminding us of some very simple things that make up the notion of you and I becoming who God would have us to be. We won't ever make a move. We we won't ever grow the way we want to be or become who we would have uh, ha have a desire to be because growth doesn't just happen. You have to prayerfully work your life goals. And I want to challenge you that in looking at prayerfully working your life goals, one of the key components to becoming who God would have you to be is being intentional. Not just thinking about it, not just praying about it, not just dreaming about it, not just having the ambition, but being intentional. But being intentional, the idea of doing a thing on purpose, doing it by design and doing it with all of your heart leaning in toward it, just like the end. The only way you can really do that is by overcoming the things that stop you from being intentional. So what's stopping you from being intentional in your life? What's stopping you from being intentional with getting out of credit card debt, losing the weight, starting the new career, stepping into the person you want to be, being a part of an initiative that can change lives? What's stopping you? There are at least three things that can stop you from being intentional. The number one thing is the assumption the change or becoming who you want to be will just happen. Nothing in your life, no real growth takes place because it's just going to happen automatically. No one can improve in where you are by accident. If you want a better life, it begins by you being a better you. You want a better career? Be a better you. You want better finances? Be a better you. You want, you want better relationships? Be a better you. Do you want a better social situation? Be a better you. It's not going to happen by accident. You've got to be intentional. It's not going to happen just because you assume things will get better. No, that will stop you from living intentionally. So don't just assume things are going to happen. But then number two, number two, don't be afraid. The second thing that will hinder you from being intentional is the fear of making a mistake. All growth comes with failure. No one who ever became, no individual who stepped into their full horizon did so without making mistakes. So when you make a mistake, fail forward. There's a thinker by the name of Warren Bennis who says a mistake is simply another way of doing a thing. Really, the idea is what Paul would say. You and I have to learn in whatever condition we're in to, to grab the insight out of that. Life is pregnant with the curriculum that can make you better 
if you and I are intentional about learning from it. Every step you make is an opportunity for you and I to learn how God is shaping you to do things better, how God is changing your, 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 your thinking, how he's wiring you to become more and more like him. This is a season, this is a period for you and I not to be afraid of making mistakes, but to use those, use those as momentum to become even better. So don't allow the concept of, make, of, of assuming things will get better to be in your way. Don't allow the fear of making mistakes to be in your way. But then there's a third thing that's probably the most detrimental. The one barrier that can stop you from being intentional and growing like what God would have you to grow. And that, that mentality is just not beginning. If you, if you can sit back and never start, never actually do what you want to do. I want to save money, but you never put anything away. I want to lose weight, but you never work out. You never change your diet. I want to, I want to know more, but you never read. I want to, I want to, I want to better, uh, 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 I want to step in and, and change people's lives, but you never go into the community. If you never get started, you'll never actually become so the longer you and I can just go and get caught in the idea of thinking about it, but never do anything about it, then you will never actually intentionally become who God would have you to be. Think about it this way. The longer you wait to do something you should do now, the greater the odds are that you will never actually do it. Paul would say this, you and I need to redeem the time because the days are evil. You ain't got a lot of time left. So waiting and, and, and hoping and thinking and putting it on the back burner and I'll get around to it and I'll do it tomorrow and I'll start next week and I'll start a, a little later on. The, the longer you keep changing your start date, the more successful you will be at never actually accomplishing anything. Did you catch that? Be intentional about what God has crafted you to be and about what your passion has placed on your heart. Be the person that God would have you to be. Consider the end, as we've read in the book of Proverbs, and become. This is a season. This is an opportunity for you to become. Grow. Grow forward and give God glory in your life. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We thank you and we bless you for being our God. We thank you for the challenge you've laid in our life through the word of God and through thinking through how we can become who you have crafted us to be. Lord, we pray that you remove the barriers that stop us from being intentional in our life. Help us, Lord, not to just assume things will get better, that to assume that we will uh, be financially secure, to assume that we will be spiritually more endowed, to assume that we will be socially more relevant. Help us not to assume those things. But Lord God, we ask that you help us every single day to be about making moves that will be a blessing to our life and a blessing to other, others' lives. Help us not to be afraid of making mistakes knowing that everything we do, we do with you. And we learn, Lord God, from the curriculum of life to do things better, to become more uh, precise, to become those that are enhanced because of how you have blessed us and how you have strengthened us. And so, God, we call on you to be our power in every season that we're in to do things better. We ask, oh God, that you bless us to have the right mentality, you bless us to have the right opportunity, that you bless us to have the right spirit, that you bless us to step into this moment in a healthy and a spiritually focused manner. We love you and we honor you. God, we pray still in this season that you heal and strengthen and deliver. We pray, Father, that you help us to make the most of this moment. We pray that you protect our world. Be with those that are in charge. Help those, that, Lord God, that are still wrestling through this pandemic. We have not forgotten. We still need you. And we ask, oh God, that you bless, strengthen, and heal. We pray that you continue to be with the families that need you in a special way. Move as only you can, God, and we will be careful to give you glory and, and all the honor in the process. We love you. We honor you. We adore you. And in the name of Jesus, we call on all of these things as we together say amen. God bless you and God keep you. Listen, I want to challenge you. Step into those things that help us to become. Be who God called you to be. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Don't sit back and wait for it to come. And whatever you do, allow God to move you in a way where you can be the image bearer that has infinite potential because you're made like Christ. All right. I'm going to pray for you. I'm asking you, please pray for me and let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you. There was a woman a long time ago. She came to the well, y'all, every day. Got to talking to my
Just in Jesus, cause I know it's gonna 